with you tonight again as our second time together uh, in this time of prayer. And on behalf of our executive coordinator, Paul Baxley, and myself, Laura Yala, coordinator for Global Missions, I we are honored to have you with us tonight at this opportunity to pray, be praying at the table for missions. As we reach the end of this year's um, campaign of our offering for global missions, we wanted to close it in prayer, um, making sure that you have the opportunity also to see our field personnel and they will be praying for you. And we're very happy to have a great group of our field personnel tonight and they will continue to join us every week. So until the end of September, every Wednesday, we will be here together praying at the table for missions. So this is in the context of our uh, this, of our theme for this year, which is a place at the table for everyone. And there is a video that I think summarizes in a beautiful way what this theme means and why we think there is a place at the table for everyone. Let us see it. Almost everything that we do involves food. If you think back to when you were a college student or a young adult and you had an opportunity to go to someone's house and eat with friends, it was a time that we could gather, we could eat, we could share, we could talk about life, and we could have our Bible study as well. As a musician and as a worship leader, I think of a wonderful hymn called A Place at the Table. And it talks about different constituencies in society who need and want a place at the table and how in God's realm, they already have that place at the table. The refrain of that song, and God will delight when we are creators of justice. We are creators of justice providing a place for everyone. Everyone. We are welcoming not only Christian students from our congregation, but atheists, agnostics, Muslims, Hindus, people from all around the world coming to our universities to study. They are welcome in our home. They are welcome at our table. And not only are they welcome, but they're active participants in what we do and the food we eat. Everything we do here from building beloved community to transformational development serves our desire to bear witness to Christ. It's a community and one is not better than the other. We're in this together. To be able to have a place at this table, literally for us, I mean, it's an actual table in many ways because we're talking about food that they would not normally have access to. It's a mighty big table with hundreds and hundreds of uh, places set. And we see this uh, coming together where people of different backgrounds and races and nationalities are coming together. They're supporting one another. They are allies for one another. And there's just something very human and very divine about that moment. It's an equal chair. Every time you come up to the table, it's not because you're some random guest that we feel obligated to make room for. It's because you belong. You're part of us. You're one with us. Who else can we help access joy together? Who else is invited to, to lean in to life? That table symbolizes to me the consciousness of what we do for each other, how we show up. And that table should be a table that can't ever be fully filled because it's always open and inviting. So we want to work on a level that's not superficial. 
We want to be in a deep relationship and a covenant relationship with folks, with people, because we are all in this together. Being a preacher, <laughs> I, many times I prefer to illustrate stuff that just give it concept. I, I, I will say that for me, a place on the table basically will be the need, my need, to open my eyes that there's people who are still out of that table. So basically what I need to do is to move a little bit to make space for others. We usually like to sit on the table with those who are like us. So before anybody judges us, I feel like you should come sit down and have a conversation with us. You know, we're not just homeless. We are homeless, but we're kind of colored, more colorful characters because of it. You know, um, I'm pretty sure Jesus was homeless too, and a wanderer. Spreading the word everywhere it goes. Kind of like me, I guess. As we read the Gospels, we see Jesus at the table with all. Many conversations, many experiences were shared at the table. And tonight's theme is teaching at the table. We want to uh, talk about that experience when Jesus was at the table with his disciples and, and what they learned with him at that time. We want to pray also for our field personnel, their ministries, but also um, for your prayer requests. So as we continue, feel free to tell us through the Facebook page how you want us to accompany you in prayer. We, we will be having that particular pray prayer towards the end of this broadcast. Thank you for being with us, and I hope that this is a time for you to rejoice in the Lord. Let us pray. I'm, I'm asking Stella one of our field personnel to uh, have this prayer for praising God for his love and mercy. Pray with me, please. To you alone, merciful creator, do we offer our praise. You who set the stars in place, know us each by name. You know when we sit and when we rise, when we dance and when we mourn when we love and when we feel that we are unlovable. We give you thanks that your love and your mercy is poured out on us like a constant river which never runs dry. It heals us, restores us, and gives us the courage and strength to love others with that same merciful love. Help us now with open arms, hands, minds, and hearts to receive that love allow it to transform us and to pour that love into our world, letting them know that there is a place at your table for them. And may you alone receive the praise in the name of the one who demonstrated his love for us through the cross. We pray. Amen. 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 And Stella, before you leave, could you tell us a bit about, you your full name and also what you will be doing we have to say that we're very happy to have received stella um as our field personnel and be she was commissioned at our past um general assembly in atlanta this past month of june so we're very happy to have stella and could you please tell us a bit of what you will be doing sure um i am honored to be part of the cbf global missions family i grew up in western north carolina um and my background is in counseling and in ministry. I have served in schools in counseling as well as as associate pastors in um, three Baptist churches. 
Um, and I will be headed to Larnaca, Cyprus in the Mediterranean to work with um, asylum seekers um, in the area of mental health. Um, Cyprus is little, but it gets um, about 21 or 22,000 refugees a year. Um, a lot of those are unaccompanied minors, and it's my heart's prayer to figure out how to love on those people and um, to help them to start healing um, from the atrocities that made them have to leave. Thank you, Stella. And we'll continue to pray for you and your ministry as you begin this journey with CBF Global Missions and also with the call that God has placed in your heart. Thank you Absolutely. for being and at this point, we want to continue with a beautiful scripture reading. And I'm asking Karen to please join us. And Karen, if you have the scripture, and we are looking forward to hearing you. Thank you. My name is Karen Morrow. I'm CBF field personnel serving among refugees in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and throughout the state of Texas. Uh, our scripture reading tonight is from Luke 22, 14 uh, through 20. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat of it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide, divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Jesus took time around the table to teach his disciples as he had done many times before. But here in this passage, it is a last supper before his arrest. There was no time left. There was a sense of urgency, the need to teach one last thing that would guide and strengthen them through the difficult times that lay ahead. There's room around the table for the disciples and there's room around the table for you and for me. Thank you, Karen. Yes, there is a space. There's a space for all of us at the table. And it's great that at that space of the, the table, Jesus is also teaching us so many things. And I'm, I'm really excited when I see what our field personnel are doing through educational ministries in seminaries, in Bible schools, uh, just gathering through hospitality, gathering people at their home and teaching them, teaching them about Jesus, teaching them about the gospel, but also having the opportunity to learn from each other. And that's why we want to have this prayer for all our field personnel, for their gift of teaching in words and deeds and how they're able to reach many in diverse and complex contexts to give them hope and skills to transform their lives and their context and their families and everything they're going through. Um, so we, we want to pray for our field personnel and Javier is here to do that. Thank you, Laura. And thank you, Karen, for reminding us um, of that important space, the table. Thank you, Laura, for bringing us together to this wonderful table to celebrate and to pray. Now, would you please pray with me? Eternal God, we come before you today with hearts full of gratitude for the field personnel of the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. These women and men who are agents of your love and grace, tirelessly reaching out to diverse in complex contexts to offer hope and to offer their skills for transformation and for the healing of the world. They are the embodiment of your teachings, both in words and deeds. We lift up CBF field personnel around the world 
who are selflessly dedicating themselves to transformational ministry opportunities in context of global migration and global poverty in partnership with the global church. Bless them with strength, wisdom, and unwavering faith as they navigate the challenges they encounter. We also pray for the continued support of the offering for global missions, which enables the work of career field personnel, global service court members, summer interns, and engagement partners. May your abundant blessings be upon all those who support and participate in this vital mission. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Javier, for being here with us tonight. Also, Javier is part of our staff at the CBF Global Mission Support Staff Indicator. Thank you, Javier. Um, but again, we need to continue praying, praying for our field personnel, not just tonight, every day, as you wake up, as you go to bed, please have them in your prayers, um, asking God to continue to give them wisdom in everything that they teach and everything that they share with the many people that they are impacting every single day of their lives. But that is not possible if we don't have the support that is given through the offering of Global Missions. It is that offering that with so much love and sacrifice is given by our churches and our partners and individuals that want to support missions, that they are able to be there. And that's why we have a long-term presence. So we are committed to have a long-term presence in all these different countries, and not only out of the United States, but also within the United States, assisting our own people in our own country. Um, I'm asking Greg to have this prayer. Greg, if you tell us where you are, what you do, and please have this prayer for the offer, for the offering for Global Missions. Thank you, Laura. Hello, my name is Greg Smith, and I, along with my wife, Sue, serve in Fredericksburg, Virginia, as CBF Global Missions field personnel with and among the immigrant, refugee, and asylum community that has chosen to make this part of Virginia and our country their home. I'm thankful for the opportunity to have this time for prayer, and I'm grateful that you are joining us this evening. Let me ask us now to pray for the offering for Global Missions. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, we come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts for your love and mercy shed upon us in all creation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We praise you as the one from whom all blessings of life, health, and goodness flow. For you, O God, are the giver of all good things. In this moment, we humbly bring before you our petitions on behalf of the offering for global missions. You have graciously gifted CBF with the offering for global missions as the means by which the presence of CBF field personnel, personnel around the world may be supported. You have taught us that by giving from the abundance you have given us, we become co-laborers with you in blessing the world, which you so dearly love. So now we pray by the power of your spirit moving in and among us, that you would lead us to give generously and faithfully to the offering for global missions. We ask that you might multiply these gifts in the service of the gospel among all those to whom you have called CBF Global Missions field personnel to serve. We pray that in receiving of your grace and in our giving in response to your grace, the reign of God would come on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Greg. And we also know that not only our field personnel, but also our pastors and within our congregations, also our Bible school teachers, our youth ministers, everyone has an opportunity to this, for discipleship. Um, and we want to pray for them. We want to pray for our congregations. We want to pray for all those that have that gift of teaching and that they do not only because of what they say, but there are many that are able to teach through their personality, through their action, through uh, their attitudes toward things. And that's when really we are able to witness um, to others what Jesus has done in our lives. So let us pray, and I'm asking Steve to have this prayer. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. 
I'm, I'm Steve Clark. I'm a minister that works with refugees from Burma as CBF field personnel in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we're no strangers to the food that's being um, talked about around the table. The Karen folks, when you go in to visit, the first thing they do is bring in food and sit down at a small table in front of you and they place um, drinks and snacks and uh, then you, you chat for a little while before you get down to business to talking and teaching about things. And on the weekends, on Saturday afternoons and Sunday afternoons, uh, many of the families and the churches will have uh, worship services that they have where they invite uh, church members and the pastors to come and help them to celebrate an event in their lives, like a birthday for their child or an anniversary for uh, them arriving in the United States or the buying of a new house, a Thanksgiving worship. And at the end of that worship, they'll have a big meal for everybody until they, they, they'll all eat until they can't uh, eat anymore. And then they'll take some home. Um, um, teaching around the table is nothing new to uh, Korean folks and the folks that we serve in rural. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this good day. Thank you for the love and mercy, for your help and your strength, and for your spirit that lives in us, teaching our hearts to love as you love. Lord, as your disciples, we need your presence that teaches us how to love. But we also need instruction that teaches us how to live out our Christian lives each day. We need holy, knowledgeable teachers who will live out their lives as good examples for all of us. We need pastors and ministers, music liturgists, worship leaders, deacons, teachers, mentors, and friends. Bless them all with wisdom and understanding and give them enthusiasm for the power of the lessons that you've taught us all through the life and teachings of Jesus and the scriptures. Make us good disciples of Jesus. Give us strength and courage to live holy lives, boldly speaking truth and good news to those you put in our paths. You've made us all teachers. We love you, Lord. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Um, and also tonight we want to pray as the school year begins. Um, we know that we are almost every year facing very difficult challenges in our schools regarding violence in different ways, not only um, for active shooters, and we have already seen that um, in some universities just a few weeks ago, last week actually, um, but also uh, bullying, uh, and other ways of violence, like not our children not having the opportunity to receive the education they really need or having the resources they really need uh, to fulfill that purpose that God has for them. So let us pray for our schools, for our teachers, the children, our youth. Um, let us pray to have a year without violence, without deaths, um, and a year that our children are able to flourish. And we're asking Scarlett to join us. Yes, good evening. I'm Scarlett Jasper, um, CBF field personnel serving in Appalachia. And I work in rural poverty. I work with folks experiencing homelessness, uh, with winter relief especially, um, providing emergency shelter and that much needed hot meal and place at the table. Uh, during those winter months with our folks. Um, but I also work closely with the schools in the communities that I serve with helping with back to school needs, uh, clothes, food, uh, all of those items, as well as our Christmas boxes for Appalachia Project. So let us pray for those children now. Yeah. Lord, we humbly come before you today with heavy hearts Seeking your divine protection and guidance, we ask that you surround our schools with your loving presence as the world continues to grapple with the senseless acts of violence that afflict our schools. We implore you to shield our students, teachers, and staff from harm. We recognize the importance of creating a safe and nurturing environment for learning and growth. 
Lord, we specifically ask for your protection for our students. Guard them from harm, both physical and emotional. Shield them from the negative influences and pressures of the world, that they may focus on their studies and fulfill their potential. We pray for your intervention in any situation of conflict or bullying that may arise. Help all involved to respond with love, forgiveness, and understanding so that healing and reconciliation may take place. Lord, pour out your wisdom upon educators, giving them guidance and insight as they shape the minds and hearts of our children. Grant them the strength to face each day with courage and resilience. Guide our educators and help them recognize signs of distress in their students and equip them with the tools and skills to offer support. Help them create nurturing environments where every student feels seen, valued, and heard. Lord, surround our schools with your divine presence, creating an atmosphere of safety, love, and mutual respect. We acknowledge that you are the ultimate source of wisdom, strength, and peace. Please grant wisdom to those in positions of authority to implement effective measures that prevent violence in schools while maintaining an atmosphere of learning and growth. Enlighten our leaders to focus on policies, initiatives that address the root causes of violence and provide adequate resources for mental health support. Lord, we lift up the students, teachers, staff, and families who've been affected by the tragedy of school violence. We ask for your healing touch and comfort to be upon them as they navigate through the pain, sorrow, and trauma that has gripped their hearts. Lord, we acknowledge that violence of any kind is an affront to your perfect plan for humanity. We stand united against all forms of violence, specifically in our schools where innocent lives are being harmed. We pray for transformation in the hearts of those who are inclined towards violence. May your love guide them towards the path of empathy, compassion, and respect. We ask all these things in the name of your precious son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Scarlett. Um, when I accepted Jesus when I was 14 years old, there's something that I was taught very early in my life. And I'm very grateful for those um, elder from my church that taught me this, and it's to pray and the importance of prayer. So since then, prayer has been very important in my life and prayer at all times, like the Bible says. So um, when, when we pray, we don't only recognize that we need something. We also are acknowledging that Jesus and our God is almighty, is all powerful, and is always present listening to us, but also taking very serious every single um, expression that comes from our heart. Um, God knows us. He knows what we need, but it's so, it's so, it feels so good when you're able to express it and know that God is looking at you with so much love and really paying attention to what you're saying and what your needs are. Um, and it's God, God is with us through the Holy Spirit right now as we have come together through these means. So we want to pray um, for all those requests that we have received. Um, Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So we will continue to pray for the offering of global missions, but we will also pray for all the requests that we have received. You see a QR code right there at, at the screen, and that's where you can have more information about the offering for global missions, and you can actually um, support the work that is being done by all our missionaries. But let us pray now. And um, Sue asked us to pray for El Salvador and some people who live there um, for all the situations that are currently facing. Um, Jarelis is asking us to pray for her mission, next mission trip to Cuba. They already organized three, um, but they are already working for a fourth one and they want us to join her in prayer. Surma is asking us to pray for families. Um, and yes, families are going through very difficult times. It's not only children, it's also the youth and the adults in, within the families. And Rick is asking us to pray for recently arrived Afghan refugees in the San Francisco Bay Area um, for good paying jobs. Um, so, and I know there are many other requests that maybe you have not had the chance to write um, in our Facebook page, 
But you know what? The best thing that we have is that um, our God through the Holy Spirit is there with you and is listening to you, to your heart at this time. So let us pray. At this time, we come to you, O oh Lord, full of gratitude and praise, gratitude for your love, for your mercies every day, for giving us so much that sometimes we don't stop to say thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you. That's all I can say. Thank you, O oh Lord. And at this time, we come to you to present these prayer requests that have been shared with us. You know, each of these persons that have trusted us to bring this to you, but also we know that you are right there next to them, that you will continue to listen to their hearts as they share with you those thoughts, those concerns, those situations that are currently burdening their lives. Grant peace, grant an opportunity to trust you, to know that you love us and that you will, you are listening. Confirm to each and every one of them and those that probably have not shared but are going through very difficult circumstances at this right time. Confirm through different ways. The only ways you can, you know, that the person will know that is you talking to them, communicating with them, that you love them, that you're there and that you're listening. Thank you because you have um, asked us to come to you and that grants us a time of relaxing and knowing that we are in good hands because you are that love, God that loves us. We ask that you continue with us tonight. We ask that you continue with all our field personnel everywhere in the world and within the United States. We pray that you continue moving hearts so that people can provide and give additional offering for offering for global missions uh, so that we are able to continue supporting their presence and, and listening to all the testimonies of the, of the thousands and thousands of people that are currently being served and reached and touched by the work they do. Thank you, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are very happy that you have been able to join us tonight. And we ask that you also set aside a few more minutes, 30 more minutes next week, next Wednesday. We will be doing it at Pacific Standard Time. So it will be Wednesday at, at September 13 at 7.30 p.m., but it is Pacific Standard Time. So it will be 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So please join us again. Tell others to join us and to... Um, accompanying this time to listen to our field personnel, to see them, to pray together, and to join us in this beautiful time. May God bless you. May God keep you. And have a good night. Blessings. <music>